sudden interest on my YouTube channel in the boost box with the hand crank. So I've made some improvements on that and uh, this is the latest uh, build. I would make some changes uh, on the next one that I kind of messed up on this one with. You can see that the cigarette lighter uh, sockets are right here kind of in line with the crank, which is fine if you don't have anything plugged in, but it would be more ideal to move them over here to this side, put them right here. And in order to do that, I just need to move the hand crank over this way a little bit. Now this is a much better hand crank generator than I used on my last uh, build. And I want to give a big thank you to Bill P, the YouTuber Everyday Engineering. Uh, he messaged me a link to these hand crank generators on eBay and uh, they do work much better. I haven't measured it exactly, but it seems to charge about twice as fast as the uh, crank I was using before. So uh, and what I did is I just put another bank of capacitors in here and now it charges about the same time as the last build, but it has a lot more uh, energy storage. So that's a good thing. And I'll share the links to everything uh, over at laserhacker.com. On this video, I'll go over the build process a little bit, but more importantly will be those links because I've had a lot of folks ask me about the diode uh, between the hand crank generator and the uh, capacitors. And uh, I'll put a link to these diodes. These work great. I found these on Amazon and they're really used in the solar industry uh, between the solar panel and battery, but work great in this application. So I'll go ahead and show that on the build video where you connect that. I've had questions about how do you connect that. So check that out if those are the questions you have. But uh, yeah, I'll put links to uh, all this stuff for those that want to build these up as well as the, uh, the eBay link uh, to these hand crank generators. Now these work great, but I still want to get something better than this. Uh, I think there's an option for something where the crank is larger and can create a lot more amperage uh, than this. And I may have to use a cordless uh, drill and uh, modify that, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to keep experimenting uh, in that regard. But uh, moving on from there, I'll go ahead and explain a few of the uh, things I am going to test with this and kind of the direction I'm going with this. Okay, so this lets you connect uh, inverters and things like that on the back here. And you can easily uh, convert this into something like the Solon 1 2000. So going forward, uh, I want to try using a larger box, something more like this, and putting a, a lot more of the supercapacitors inside here for some energy uh, storage to buffer the energy out. Put a larger hand crank on the side and uh, you know have the connection points for the uh, solar panel. I'm now testing the solar panel directly to these capacitor banks because these banks go up to 16 volts and start balancing. And the 400 watt folding solar panel that I'm using on the Solon 1 2000 is a 15 point uh, something volt solar panel. So when you put that out in the sun and check it in direct sun, it's around 16 volts, which is ideal for this application because then you don't need a solar charge controller. You can actually connect the solar panel directly to the capacitor bank. And I'll go ahead over at laserhacker.com and put up the specs uh, to that solar panel, the, the folding 400 watt solar panel, as well as a link to the company that I had a uh, custom make that up for me. And if you guys want to approach them and uh, find out about those, uh, you're free to do so. But anyway, uh, that's it. We'll go over the build video process, a few tests with this, and uh, it's fun stuff. Let's all keep experimenting.